you for my life. And I watch you take my family from there to here. And when times were a little rough, God, I knew you were near. I had so many ups the day for I weigh my down. But Lord, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for my life, for my life. Lord, I thank you for every victory in you I've seen and for the more. Some did make it. I could have been one of the ones who lost their way. But there are times, Lord, I know I almost went crazy. Yeah, but I'm standing here and I'm so grateful, Lord. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my life. Lord, Lord, I thank you for my life. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for my life. Jesus, I'm so yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands right there where you are. Come on, any grateful folk in the house this morning. Come on, somebody shout thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for our very lives. Father, for the truth were to be told, there were some people that turned their backs on us. But Father, you were there with us through thick and thin. And for that, Lord, we want to say thank you. Father, we ask now that you would allow your Holy Spirit to have its way in this place today. Touch every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place, Father. Meet every need, Father. Even bless us, Father, with our heart's desire. Father, we're so certain that you're going to move in this place. Father, we've got a shout in our spirit right now. So, Father, we say thank you. We shout hallelujah in this place today. We shout glory to God in this house today. Father, move in this place like never before. Father, I thank you for your healing power. I thank you for your breakthroughs, Father. I thank you for your breakouts. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, bless the Lord in this place right now and receive our anointed music ministry. Hallelujah. As they take us higher in praise and worship. Come on, continue to praise him. Continue to praise him. Because when you praise him, that's when something happens. Hallelujah.
declaring the word of the Lord. Uh -huh. Come on. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. These are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword. And we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, yeah. running on the clouds, shining like the sun, and the trumpets call.
Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah in the house? Take a moment right where you are and just lift those hands in worship and tell the Lord, I want to be where you are. Come on, tell him, I got to be where you are. Then tell him, peace is where you are. Come on, tell him, love is where you are. Come on, tell him, joy is where you are. Somebody says, contentment is where you are. Come on, lift those hands right there. Now tell the Lord, thank you. Watch this. Tell him, thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping my mind. Thank you for keeping my body healthy. Thank you, God, when the enemy came in like a flood. Thank you for lifting up a standard against him, God. Thank you for covering me when I was asleep last night. Oh, I wish you would put five things in your mouth and give God a praise for five. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, somebody say, my soul shouts hallelujah. When it says my soul shouts, it means that not just my flesh, but deep down in my spirit, I, I got a hallelujah down in my spirit. Tell your neighbor, give me five seconds, I'm going to be done, but I got to give God the best praise that I can give him. He kept me all throughout the week. He kept me when they tried to fire me. He kept me when people gave up on me. He, he kept me when people talked about me. He kept me when people turned their back. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. All over the building, just thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, fill the place. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now watch this. All those thank yous. Everybody, shh, 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 shh. Come down. Shh. All those thank yous were for things that he's already done. But I think I got some people of faith in here who say, you know what? But the next thank you is for what he's about to do that I consider done. Come on. I wish I had somebody in the room. <laughs> Clap your hands all over the building and said, I call it done. I call it done. Peace is where you are. <laughs> Love is where you are. Somebody say joy. Joy. I, I got to stop. I won't, I won't go. Watch this. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. All over the sanctuary. Grab your Bibles. The gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter number 11. Hallelujah. Luke chapter number 11. I'm going to 11 and 5, but before we go there, I'm going to stop by 11 and 2 just for a moment. I didn't even give this to your media, so don't worry about it. I just decided to do it. So Jesus says, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Last week we talked about your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And today, just for a moment, give us day by day our daily bread. Then jump down to verse number five says, and he said to them, after he teaches them how to pray, he gives them this parable to help them to understand prayer. He says, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on this journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. Watch this. The door is now shut. And my children are in bed with me. 
I cannot rise. Watch this. Some of you, you got, it's deeper than you think. I cannot rise, give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend. Watch this. Not because he's his friend, but yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and ye will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For for everyone not black people not white people not rich people not poor people not fat people not skinny people not regardless of your color regardless of your socioeconomic background your class your hair texture your skin complexion Everyone who acts receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. I, I didn't even come to ask this question, but a heavy question. If the Bible says everyone who asks receives, and everyone seeks finds, and everyone knocks, it will be open, then why do you stop? When you have not received, and you have not found, and the door has not yet been opened. I want to use for a subject today, by all means, persist. By all means, persist. Grab your seats. Have you ever had a moment of what most of us call deja vu? Deja vu is a French term that really speaks of precognition or seeming like something has happened before, even though it could not possibly have happened. In other words, have you ever gone to a place and then just for a second, you feel like I've been here before. But it's your first time at the place. So how could you have been there and noticed something familiar if you've never been there before? Have you ever had a moment in time where you're having a conversation and you're in a room with a bunch of people and y'all talking, and then all of a sudden, just a glimpse for a moment, you're like, I've seen this. And the heavy question is, how could you have seen it if it hasn't happened yet? And have you ever met someone that it seems like you have met before. I can't put my hand on it, but there's something about you that I recognize. There's something, and then you start going, well, what church do you go to? Uh, what store do you shop at? Because you're trying to figure out where you met the person. But what if I told you that there is a possibility that you never physically met them, but have met them, that you could have been in a place that you've never been before, and you could have seen scenes that have never happened yet. Pastor, how could that be? Isaiah 46 and 10 says, I am God. Watch this. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. 
listen to the text. Y'all, y'all missed it because if you understood the text, you would be shouting. I am God. What he's saying is I declare the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. What does that mean? That means, watch this, when God created the world and he said it was good, God created everything that could possibly ever be created at that moment. God says, I'm so cold that at the beginning, I finished it. So watch this. What I'm telling you is when you say a person is creative and they created something, I'm telling you they created nothing. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, which means everything was already created. And when you find something new, you don't create it. You discover it. Of what we call manifest it. So watch this. The only thing left for you to do now is to manifest that which you can't see now that is already done. Y- 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 so watch this. So, so how can we let people say there's no cure to this when if God created everything and there's going to be a cure eventually, How can you say now there is none? It's because you have not uncovered or discovered what already exists. And down the line, you will uncover what already exists and say we created what you found. A powerful illustration, I didn't even come to talk about this, is the woman whose daughter was vexed with a devil. She goes to Jesus and says, Lord, help. She says, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Jesus, knowing what he's doing, he says something powerful. He says, I'm not sent to you. I'm sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He says, it's not me to give the children's bread to the dogs. She says, even the dogs can eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Now watch this. Before you get excited and get super, super spiritual about it, what she's basically saying is, watch this. If there is a day that you are coming to us, then I don't have to wait. Somebody's going to get this. I don't have to wait until that day happens because that day has already happened, which means that by faith I can reach up and pull back to me stuff. Y'all know. Jesus says, I haven't found this kind of faith anywhere in the church. The centurion soldier says, you don't have to come to my house. You can send the word. Jesus says, whoa. So you mean to tell me that you understand that some stuff has already happened and that if you have enough faith, I don't have to walk it out. I can just send the word and go ahead and accomplish what it is that you want. I haven't found this kind of faith. In the church, which means, watch this, if you're in a dilemma today, your answer already is. Not will be. See, y'all didn't get it because I don't don't know if y'all got it. Your answer is now, which means it doesn't matter if it's going to unfold in 20 years that my now faith can reach out and grab something that's eons away. Watch this. I'm going deeper. The text says, Jesus said to them, which of you, 
shall have a friend and go to him at midnight. And midnight is this transitory moment where day becomes, night becomes day. Watch this. Even though light hasn't come. <laughs> it's crazy that at 12 a.m., it's a new day. But when you look outside, nothing resembles the fact that it's a new day, which means I can have a new day with no evidence that the day has changed. Y'all, y'all, y'all not. T- so which one of you will say to a friend at mid? The Bible knows what it's saying. At midnight, man. When it looks dark, but the day has changed. Will you treat it like a new day or an old day because there's not evidence that it has changed? Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine, watch this has come to me on a journey a journey, and has nothing for me to set before him. I don't have anything to set before him. Let's walk for a minute before we go too deep. The Bible is deeper than surface knowledge. And everything is symbolic, which has to be deciphered and understood. Watch this. Friend number one, he says, I have a friend that has come on a journey, a friend that has come on a journey. Watch this. A friend that has come on a journey. That friend represents desire. Listen to me. He represents desire. Desire comes when change is necessary. And watch this. Change becomes necessary when you get tired of your old environment, circumstance, or situation. And there are a lot of people who said, I'm sick and tired of this job. I'm sick and tired of this and sick and tired of that. Watch this. Nothing will change until a desire rises up in you that will pull you out of this old circumstance and satisfy what you're longing for. So there is no change without desire. So you can be dissatisfied all you want. But if you have no desire for better, you'll stay miserable. Where you are and complain for the rest of your life about a circumstance that won't change when you can't even fathom a desire Lofty enough to pull you out. He says, my friend is on a journey. Because whenever desire comes, watch this, the fulfillment of it is a journey. Maybe I'm preaching too heavy this Sunday morning. So when you come to God, he says, Give us this day our daily bread. You ask God for a request. Your request is a desire, and oftentimes that desire unfolds in the form of a journey. And so, watch this. That means that when you leave prayer, you should know that it's done, but not be surprised that it has to unfold. And by the way, by the way, prayer does not change God or influence God. Prayer aligns you with God and changes you. I'm going to show you what I mean in a moment. So some people think, let me go pray and see if I can influence God or manipulate God to do what I want him to do. No, prayer aligns you with God, transforms you, puts you on a journey of transformation. So not only does your circumstance change, but you change. And the problem is we go into prayer wanting to change God. 
when you ought to go into prayer, I wanted God to change you. Watch this. So the man says, I got a friend that has come. That's what happens when you get a desire. It's like I got an idea. An idea has come. He says, but watch this. The man is in the house. He's knocking at the door. He's in the bed, he says. He says, I, 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 I'm in the bed. This friend represents, watch this, the consciousness or the belief or the expectation that's needed to fulfill the desire. Which lives in you. Which means oftentimes when the desire comes, your expectation is laying flat. It has to be risen to the level of the desire. And so watch this. A lot of people, your desire has come, but your expectation is sleeping. And desire is knocking at the door. But you said, I'm in bed. And I got my children with me. Children, watch this, in this text, really represent dormant ideas. You and your dormant ideas are sleeping while desire is knocking. Watch this. He will answer, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are in bed. Jump the just a little bit. Children are in bed, but the door is shut. The door represents the emotions which block the unseen from the seen. That's why I told you earlier, the Bible says when you pray, shut the door. Shut the door of your emotions to make sure that you can believe on the level that you need to believe that you're not being influenced by the evidence that you lack. And so he says, the door is shut, which lets me know he's saying, wait a minute. I understand that there's a desire knocking at the door, but the door is shut and my kids are in the bed, which are dormant ideas. Me and these dormant ideas are shut behind our emotions and we can't see on that level yet. I taught the other night at Bible study. Um about David and Goliath. And I talked about David and Goliath from a very different perspective. God is dealing with me differently these days. And David, I said, was this young shepherd boy. And we get caught up in this young shepherd boy who beats the giant. But we miss the text. What do you mean? The young shepherd boy, watch this, is anointed because Saul disobeys God, who was the king, God sends Samuel to check Saul. Then he sends him to go anoint the next king. Because God says, I'm not happy with Saul. I need a new king. He goes to seize Jesse's boys. All of Jesse's boys, most of them are statuesque, tall. They look kingly. They look noble. Samuel says, it's got to be one of these boys. God says, it's not them. He says, because you look at the exterior. But I look at the interior. And he says to Jesse, you must have another boy. Now watch this. I'm taking my time. He says, I got another boy. He's down there tending the sheep. But he's a little cat. He's handsome, but he's small. He says, go get him. God says, that's the one. He's the man after my own heart. Now watch this. He's small in stature, but he's handsome, which really represents the promise. Because the problem with most of us in our lives is the promise is small. but beautiful. But we don't embrace it because when he was anointed, he was sent back to the pasture, which means that he was put on a journey. And in order for the fulfillment of the promise to happen, he had to unfold the journey. And many times we think God missed our prayer. God, I asked to be king. 
How can I ask to be king and you send me back to the pasture? Now watch this. In his normal working, tending the sheep, he's killing animals, protecting the sheep. And one day his dad sends him on an assignment and he shows up. His brothers are lying right here with the Israeli soldiers and he got the Philistines on the other mountain. There's a valley in between. He shows up on the scene to bring a care package and, and to bring back a report for his brothers. That's all he went for. So he thought. But watch this. In the unfolding of the desire, God had another idea. And when he showed up, he saw the giant that came down and challenged them every day. But here's the thing that I believe we miss about the giant. We think that the giant is just opposition for David and it's separate from David. But I said, watch this. I don't think he's separate from David. I think he's the part of David, watch this, that opposes the promise. And the only reason David is promoted is because all the people are standing on the ridge, but nobody will face their giant. Which means the real enemy is the enemy because the giant is made of your conditioning, what people have taught you, made of your fears, made of your failures, made of your rejections, and all the negative stuff that you've made big in your life and minimize the promise. Just the way God deals with me. And so you got the little boy who's really big because he's packed, he packs the promise. And you got the big guy who's really shallow because he's made of nothing but my past. And if my promise will fight my past, my promise will always overtake my past. But the problem is we make the past so big and the promise so small, we are afraid to face Put your hand on yourself and say, I'm bigger than this. I'm bigger than this. I'm bigger than my past. I'm bigger than my failures. I'm bigger than my conditioning. I'm bigger than my rejection. I'm bigger than my flaws. I'm bigger than my fat. I'm bigger than my skinny. I'm bigger than my black. I'm bigger than my white. I'm bigger. Whatever limitation you put on yourself, you got to make up your mind that you're bigger than that because God lives in you. Watch this. And so now, what do you got? You got three friends. Got three friends. Three represents unity. Represent completion. Because what you got to have is, you got to have the desire. And watch this, you got to have the expectation. And when all three of y'all get together, there's a completeness. That's why he wanted three loaves. Because loaves represent the substance. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence... The evidence of things not seen. So it represents the substance, but the shed door represents the evidence that's not available. And how do I get the loaves when I got no evidence? Got a knock. Watch this. I'm going to be out your way in a minute. The problem is, he says, watch this in the text. He says, do not trouble me. The door is shut. My children are in bed. He says, and I cannot rise to give to you. Here's the part that we miss. He says, I cannot rise. I cannot rise. What he's saying is, I cannot rise to the level of that desire. You have to do it. In other words, I can't get up. You have to get me up. You have to raise your level of consciousness, your level of expectation, your level of belief. Because nobody's going to get up for you. (laughs) Isn't isn't it amazing? Read the Bible. If you read the Bible, you'll you'll keep hearing the word arise. 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 All throughout the text. Arise. Not physically. Arise. Arise. Put your hand on your head and say, arise. 
Arise, arise, arise to the level of the promise that God has put on the inside of me. Arise to the level. And then you'll hear words like, and he got up. He didn't get up physically. He got up mentally, emotionally. And when his consciousness, his expectation, his belief paralleled that of the desire, then you can give birth to that. Watch this. Because you can't give birth to anything that you have not already possessed. (laughs) This is powerful right here. Watch this. The woman who approached Jesus had already taken ownership of her daughter's healing. Jesus couldn't leave there without giving it to her because she had already owned it. The woman with the issue of blood, she pressed her way. Pressing away and touching the hem of his garment was the formality. But I already owned it for when I touch him. So watch this. Everybody who got, they got what they owned. Blind Bartimaeus, what do you want? I want to see. The reason I called you because I believe that you can make me see. And the walk over to you didn't change my belief. So the journey didn't change my belief. And watch this. Persisting means this. It means holding on to the assumption that it is done until it's done. Church folks make it real spiritual. We say pray until something happens. Watch this. Let me teach you what praying is. Praying is having a picture of what you ask God for in its completed state and holding on to that state until the state manifests. <laughs> holding on to the assumption, holding on to, to the fact that I'm healed when my bones are aching, holding on to the fact that I'm out of debt when I got red bills, holding on to the fact Holding on to the fact that I'm, I can do this, I can start the business, I can do whatever. Holding on to the fact that my business is going to be fine when they say an economic recession is coming. Holding on to the fact that I'm not going to lose my house when everybody else is. Holding on to the fact, and if I do lose it, then God must have something better. Holding on to the fact. Y'all all right? I could teach you how I feel it. Watch this. So he says, ask, seek, knock. Means the consciousness of your desire, the belief that it's done, is going to be held on to until it's fulfilled. And so he says, watch this. He's knocking. He's knocking. And the dude says, Watch this. Here's for most of us. Hey, I'm in bed with my kids. Can't get you no bread tonight. Hey, man, why, why are you still knocking on my door? Hey, man, I said I got a, a friend that showed up. I don't have no bread. I got a desire that wants to manifest in my life. And I got to hold on to the faith until it's done. So I'm going to keep knocking on your door until I get the substance of things hoped for without the evidence of things seen. Y'all going to make me preach up in there. (laughs) So I'm going to keep knocking. Man, I told you I'm in bed. I know you're in bed, but I'm going to keep knocking until you get up. I'm going to keep knocking and knocking. Why? For everyone who asks receives and everyone that seeks finds and to everyone that keeps on knocking the door will be open and I wish I had 13 people that had the audacity to get up and say I'm going to keep on knocking which means I'm going to hold on to the assumption that is done until it's done and I don't care what you say about me I don't care how you feel about me 
Watch this. I'm going to persist. Watch this. No, watch this. Don't miss the text. The text. The text says. Watch this. This ain't me. The text says. The text says. Watch it. One of the musicians, you can come. I'm about to, we about to get out of here. Watch this. The text says, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend. We cool, he said, but I, I'm not getting out the bed. In other words, some circumstances are not going to happen to you because of relationships that you have or and see, and you, you, you get mad. He, he had the plan. He could have got me on. And so the Bible says, not because of his friendship, but because of his persistence. It's the persistence, not the relationship, the the persistence. Not only will he get up, but he will give him as much as he needs. Which means, watch this, when you believe God by faith and you have more faith in the promise than you do of your past over circumstances and situations and you don't let your emotions shut the door, at some point you're going to get as much as you want. But the problem with most people is they only knock once. They, 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 said, they said they wasn't hiring. Hey, did you go to the bank to see if they'll fund your idea? Yeah, I went, but they, they said no. So, so, what bank did you go to? I went to such and such. Is that the only bank in your city? They, yeah, I tried to get them to publish my book, but they wouldn't do it. Who, who is they? So, you mean to tell me nobody will publish your book is what you're saying? Or, when they said no, you accepted no. So they said they couldn't, they couldn't do anything with your, your, your physical problem, with your ailment. So since they said there's no cure, you agreed? And they said you, you had six months, so you, 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 ag- you consented to that? They said it was impossible. So so since they said it, you, you agree? Since they said limbs don't grow back, you, you, you agree? Since they said that your diabetes took your sight, that you weren't going to see no more, you, you, you agree? Since they said your kidneys weren't going to work, you, you agree? I thought God was our source. But what it sounds to me is like maybe the news might be your source. Other economists are the government. Here's one thing that you're going to have to settle, and I'm going to have to settle. When I say you, it includes me. You're going to have to conclude that God is my source. God is my sun. God is my moon. God is my day. God is my night. God is my dry place and my wet place. God is my wealthy place. God is my... 
provision. God is my peace. God is my joy. God is my all and all. Somebody throw up your hands and say, I made a decision today that God is my source. And regardless of what I see and regardless of what everybody else says, God is still going to be God. And I'm going to see stuff that other people don't see because I acknowledge God as my source. Stand to your feet right there. A good place to worship. Good place to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Sorry for giving other people authority. I'm sorry for letting other people think they had the final word in my life. I'm, but God, today I acknowledge you as source. And God, I'm going to keep knocking. And by all means, I'm going to persist. And I'm going to assume that it's already done. If I ask it according to your will. That it shall come to pass. Father, we thank you. We honor you and worship you. We adore you. For you alone are worthy to be praised. And in this precious moment, we don't take this moment lightly. God, you're moving on somebody's heart right now. God, you're transforming somebody's mind right now. Somebody's thinking that's been limited, God. You're opening up doors. And God, as the Goliaths of their past stand, God, let the promise slay the giant. And Father, we thank you for all the great things that you shall do for and through us, Lord God. And Lord, we shall be a testimony. We shall be witnesses of your goodness. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for every promise that seems to be unfulfilled. We declare right now that it is done. We believe it by faith. Your word is good with us, Lord God. And so, Father, we lift up our hands. And we shall hallelujah. We shall thank you. We shall praise you right now, Lord God. True prayer is thanking you, God, that it's already done when it doesn't even look like it's done. So, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for every soul that's saved today. Thank you for every person that rededicates their life. Thank you for every person that joins this church, Lord God. God, we give you honor and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Lord, you are the strength of my life. Amen. 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 I One more time, sing that. That's sweet right there. You are Come on. The source of my Come on, tell him you are. You are the strength of my life. Come on, sing with it. And I live. Let's see if y'all can do it. Ah. Uh. 
Come on, clap your hands all over the sanctuary. <laughs> I lift my hands in total praise. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. Boy, I'm about to have church all by myself. I'm telling you, I'm about to have church all by myself. One more time. You are... You are. Yeah, I like that. Sing it real smooth, real smooth, real smooth. You are? Come on, let's go home.
Hallelujah. Come here, Elder. Come here. Do our, invi do our invitation and our communion for us.